Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we're gonna continue with the part 3 of the dual pension tree build. In this part we will benchmark it. So we got the dual pension tree 1 GHz with the GeForce 3 TI 200 and 4 gigs of RAM. So I want to stop with Quake 3 here because I spent a little bit of time modifying the Quake 3 source code. I have done some modifications to it before. Very minor, a few lines, uh, but I spent some more integrating a patch that I showed on my Atom MP, the MTGL32.dll that also goes with the MTGL INI file. That is basically a mini GL layer that uh, goes in between, say, OpenGL32 and uh, acts like a like a pseudo layer uh, for the as a renderer. So it in turn hooks into OpenGL32 or Glide, depending on how you configure it. And this allows for uh, using multiple CPUs to do rendering calls and get a performance boost in Quake 3, essentially. And this is thanks to Chris Donal, I think it's called, I'm not sure, might be butchering his name, but uh, the credits for that patch goes to him. Uh, sadly, he seems to stop that uh, Beta 3 release and never like the release some final version and I can't uh, what I can find remains of his web page the links are dead so I did find a patch eventually on internet archives so let's uh, start Quake 3 here and uh, see what I have done because the way you usually set this thing is in the console so there are something called C bars C -bar, like that in the console and that's like Anything you can set basically, so like R, G, L, R, it's called R, G, L, driver. So that is our driver. So now we've got empty GL32, default is open GL32. So like I said, empty GL32 is right now also configured to hook up, hook into open GL32. So we, we're actually running open GL32, uh, open GL32 obviously, so you can see that here. If we were running a 3FS card, we would see that here. But we can see like the gear extensions here, gear RB, depth, texture, and so on. So you would see the same thing if you were running uh, the actual open gear 32 straight up. So what I have done essentially is reprogram the client a little bit to allow me to pick from the menu. So default is open open GL or open GL32. It's a basic open GL driver, uh, your systems open GL driver. And then you got Voodoo, which is TDFX VGL. Uh, and then you got MTGL32, which I added, which essentially hooks into OpenGL32, but now allows for multi threading through his DLL. And then I got MTTDFX uh, or MT3DFX, yeah. Uh, which is the same file renamed the hex editor to look for the other INF file, which has slightly different configuration required for 3DFX. Uh, it was just easy for me to do it that way than do even more programming in Quake 3 to make it right to the INF file. Also this way you can have different settings for both of them if you for some reason have say two Voodoo twos and IE for three card and you can toggle between those two and have different settings and INF, uh, INF files. So yeah. So this is basically what I added. So by default you have default and Voodoo. And that's all you have. And then we got uh, these added here. And they also, you can't use uh, R underscore SMP uh, with uh, this uh, SMP driver here. And it, it will screw up the whole rendering and make the game look corrupt and crash and stuff. Uh, it does force it to zero if you select any of these two options here. But you can select one of these options obviously here and you can then by yourself screw it up like that and then do a video restart you start the game so you can still screw it up uh, but you should never have both native the native quake 3 smp and this uh, this mod let's call it that uh, running uh, at the same time that doesn't work and doesn't offer any benefits just creates a mess so i put in some uh, checks to make sure that isn't made by mistake in the menu at least you can also check out sound, which I did change. It says phone there, which is not something you find in Vanilla Quake 3. So, 
I think, yeah, let's see here which way it is. It's kind of weird because QuickT is programmed to restart the whole menu system by default. I could probably change that, but uh, yeah. So now it's low. That is, we do S kilohertz. That's 11, default is 22. Thing is, original Quake 111 on my CD, you can select high and low, and it does change something called uh, S compression, I think. But that C bar is gone. So, what happens is if you set anything, if you set low when we start the game, you're gonna have high end again in, in 1.32. Point release. So, uh, yeah. And this should actually change the quality of the sound quite a lot. And it does change the performance a lot. Uh, the game is much faster on saying 8 bit, which is this one. Phone. Should be on phone right now. Sound, phone here. Yeah. And we can check that there. We are on phone. Thing is, if you set any arbitrary value that is something else than 8, 11, 22, it, from my testing, it will go back to 22. So like you could set to anything you wanted, like 16, but that won't work if the game doesn't have a valid case that you enter, it will default to 22. And the way they, they actually uncoded, they com com commented out uh, anything but 22. So basically what they commented out the last few lines that allows you to set 22 and 11, I think. And uh, they commented that out and basically hard coded this, this to 22. So it doesn't matter, it runs all the code to check what you set and everything, and then it just goes like, nope, 22. That's what the last version does. And you can check it yourself in the source code. Uh, should be on GitHub original. So basically, what I did, I did not, I did not remove their commit or what they commented out. What I did was I rewrote it and added another case for 8 kilohertz to that. And it, it does seem to make some bad noises in the in the movies and uh, on voiceovers and especially on ISA card, but in the actual game it sounds fine when you play. So if you have a fast machine you might as well run the high quality, but if you're on a like this is phone is perfect if you're trying to get like a 200 300 megahertz system running this game. This is perfect, it uh, reduces the CPU usage a lot. So yeah, the, this video is almost uh, as much a review of Quake 3 as my system, I guess. But what we can do now, obviously, instead of talking so much, uh, is benchmarking. So we can actually, we can go back to default here. Uh, accept. I'm using a performance config like an autoexec.cfg. It's gonna look like crap, but we want that to look like crap because we want uh, to remove the GPUs, the bottom like. So this is gonna look ugly, but it's fast. So basically, we're doing like the low resolution, low settings as much as possible to just to to have the CPUs be the bottom like. So that's 2.59, we can run it a second time just to get some idea of an average. And right now we're running default, so that's OpenGL32, no voltage rate, so let's say 2.60. And then we can go to setup, systems here, driver, and I have no voodoo card in this one. I tried it actually, it works with voodoo too, but uh, yeah. The multi-threading it really comes in handy when you're CPU limited. If you oh, if your GPU limited, it's not gonna do that much for you. If your CPU limited, it's gonna do a lot. Also, for some reason, Gamma is darker with his uh, mini gear layer, but that's fine. We can probably just change that completely. But can yeah, so 302.4 FPS from 260. I don't know the percentage, but uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I run another one just to compare. And 2.7, so, so from 260 to 302. So we can do a single player game here just for the fun. Just to show that we can actually play this, this is perfectly playable. The PS 999. Uh, reason why you don't want uh, unlimited FPS and uh, the FPS count drop is the FPS count actually <laughs> reduces your total FPS. So FPS drops with, it, with that on. So we actually gonna turn that off again. 
Max M125 that had to do with the physics when you play it at pros like that. I don't care too much. We can also do this with this setup system. Then we can go to our default. Turn off the SMP patch. We can go up time. Um, let's see here. Or SMP is zero. We can set it to one. This enables the like the native SMP support in the game. So this is what people traditionally use. But the problem with it is that it has negative scaling on a lot of systems. So. My at Olympia can get it to scale positively if I have very low settings in the graphics. But, yeah. but as you can see, 200.8 frames per second. SMP is one. And I got RGL driver. This open GL, see. So, like I said, if I go in here, and system and go voodoo. And to GL32, it will also turn off our SMP. So our SMP is now zero. Otherwise, we just hang there if we hadn't done that. Now, some of you might say, oh, there's something else optimized in his stuff, so it's not open, and it's not uh, multi threaded, uh, just because you get more performance. And yeah, that could be true if you didn't verify that. Things are actually, you know, scaling beyond one CPU in any significant manner. A few percent, then that could be, you know, the other CPU doing background tasks, handling interrupts and stuff like that. But yeah, but you can do like this, except that. Now we can run this thing in window mode. We should be able to get the task menu here somewhere. Processor, no performance, and update speed is high now. Yep, so we got this time demo on. Demo four. You can already see the CPUs, both CPUs are using, working together around 75%. So that's because obviously OpenGL is running in the menus. We have got menus based on OpenGL and 3D graphics. So so 12 FPS there, and this is with RGL driver set to MTGL32. Three hundred eleven. So if you go back to setting this to basically default, and accept that. And now it's gonna go full screen too. And we can change that. And that's set to open gl thirty two. We can already see that the CPU is at fifty percent. Basically, we're stuck using one CPU. And that's not gonna change much. That CPU can do some interrupts and stuff. Two percent. We got 270 FPS, which is not bad, but it's not 312, and it's definitely not using two CPUs. Spikes real hard, eh? Over 82% there. I've seen more or less 99% ones. But yeah, as you can see, SMP is working in Quake 3. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video so you can download uh, 
this patch. I call it Quake Tree SMP, basically. And like I said, the actual patch, the actual fix for SMP is Chris Donald. So I've done that. He does Unreal Tournament stuff too. You can Google him if you find stuff. I don't know what he's doing today. I don't know who he's. But I, I did find that he did, uh, like I said, Unreal renders and stuff. My friend is testing out some of his old projects and they seem to be promising. So I got this uh, basically combined the Quake 3 vanilla source code because I tried IO Quake and stuff like that and I always find them to be actually slower on these other systems. So what I did was I compiled my own version of Quake 3 from the source code, modified it like I showed, I added the menu options, I actually added, and added so you can actually use it like the sound uh, activated that. It's a little bit buggy but the performance gains are quite nice. So you can download this file here and you get all of this. So you get the readme, basically telling you what the patch is and uh, some credits and stuff. Uh, so you need all of this except this folder. This is, we call it false configs. Uh, it's essentially just an auto exec you can use that will force. So I use this one now for, for, the, for the speedy version of the Quake 3 here. But I usually play either this one or usually a fast system like this one which is, looks more like the game should but, but it's still much faster but yeah you get his uh, empty gl gl patches uh, one more slightly modified for 3fx just to make it easier for me to integrate uh, and then you get this, these files and i have modified the, the game to not use the uh, virtual machine if you don't know quite three runs a virtual machine for the menus, for example, so you can see UI here. Um, so it runs a lot of things in a virtual machine, and those files you can have them either as DLLs or is uh, like a pseudo risk language, uh, and those files are stored on in one of the pack files. So if you want to load these, you usually have to explicitly tell Quake 3 to use the DLLs. So what I did, and what they initially did in develop mode basically activate the developer mode and um, permanently t told the game to use these instead. So it's, uh, because if I don't do that, it won't load the actual sh menus that I changed to allow you to set the different like audio and video. So this is essentially what I've done. I integrated his uh, Chris SMP patch and I fixed, uh, I'll fix, I added back the options, I actually set the sound quality somewhat, I actually get some performance gain for that slight buggy with all the sound cards it seems in the lower quality modes but uh, yeah so you can download this basically drag and drop you basically take all of this drag it over your existing quake 1.32 install so you need quake uh, quake 3 quake 3 you need quake 3 quake 3 1.3 2 point release and you just drag and drop, drop this straight over this is compiled in Visual Studio 2005 with some uh, with optimized flags. So you start with the box much faster binary with something like five to ten percent. Then you can add up the gains from the audio from the SMP patch if you have a dual core CPU or multiple CPUs. So yeah, I'll link that in the description. I can use. So I loaded up the game with some more appropriate settings, so higher resolution. Uh, sound uh, still on phone. It should be on empty GL32. So it looks quite a lot better now, more like you would expect for Creative to look from uh, the box art. So 243. I don't think the difference is going to be as big now because we're getting more into the GPU limited territory. 215, so yeah, it's still up with, uh, with the multi threading on. Uh, let's go sing a play game here. So I locked the frame rate. 225 and I'll turn on the FPS counter so you can see it. 
So the whole goal is to try to stick to 125. Now I can't jump like a pro gamer Quaker. But uh, yeah, this is apparently what the pro Quake 3 gamers want. So yeah, I'm gonna put the, the patch and everything down in the description. And I think uh, this would be the only benchmark for this machine. I uh, don't see any point running a whole bunch of benchmarks. It's uh, just like the Atlan MP. It uh, performs quite well with uh, like with 7 zip. It can use both CPUs to pack files. It can, you can run Blender on it. No, not that I know why you want to use an old machine for Blender. It's painful as it is. But yeah. So I think that's it for this video. So a bit of dual pension tree and Quake 3 modding and hacking I suppose. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.